Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Monday, October 9th at 8.13 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017, doing a seismic update. Some interesting seismic activity has been happening the last few days. We have lots of earthquakes happening in this 5.0 to 6.0 range around the Ring of Fire. Uh, we had a 6.6 .6 off of Kamchatka here in the Bering Sea, and a recent 4.1. My buddy just called me from San Jose, and I took a look. Man, California is ringing. Take a look at all these small quakes that are happening in the San Andreas area, as well as along the subduction zone. And then I noticed this little nice quake out here in New Madrid, and took a take a look, took a look out here in close up um, of the last few days, and saw that there were four or five quakes that had happened uh, in the New Madrid area, as well as several in the Appalachians. These are rare occurrences of quakes. They don't happen a lot. These are fracking quakes. These can be discounted, but this grouping of quakes here in New Madrid is new. We've had quakes happening over the past year in abundance here. So there's an uptick in New Madrid. We also had the draining of the Mississippi in this area, which could actually be seeping into uh, the fault lines here in the New Madrid fault zone and causing the river to drain and lubricating the fault zone in this area, which is not a good thing, folks. Trust me on that one. You don't want to lubricate a fault because if you lubricate a fault, through deep water well injection, we have proven that it causes earthquakes right out here in Oklahoma. So bad, bad things could be happening over there in the New Madrid area. And if we come over here and look at seven days, we have a lot of activity up here in the Soda Springs area and the Yellowstone Basin. Uh, up here in Cascadia, lots of activity. And more importantly, the amount of activity down here on the San Andreas is pretty intense. There was just a 4.1, and let's just bring it back to one day, Matt, one day, today's earthquakes. There's quite a few here, and extensive being along the length of the fault line. That's all I'm going to say there, guys. <clears throat> a heads up, if you live in a fault area, maybe you want to start think about moving soon and getting to a safer place, because there will be major earthquakes. This is the earthquake seismic hazard map for North America. I'll leave you links to all this, showing the percentage that there's going to be a catastrophic hazard in your area based on where you're living. So if you're thinking of moving, use this map. I've moved into this light blue area here in the Four Corners region for safety. These white areas obviously are downwind from Yellowstone, not safe from seismic activity directly, but very vulnerable, this area indirectly from Yellowstone. So you do your own research. Don't take my word for it. <clears throat> this is the damage that happened in 1895 at the New Madrid Fault Zone. Total destruction in the red. Catastrophic destruction in the red. Here is the 1994 quake uh, with catastrophic destruction in the red. So notice how many tens of millions of people would be affected by this earthquake. And anyone east of the quake wouldn't be able to get west of the quake after it happened because it would essentially sever all forms of transportation east-west, except maybe down here on the Gulf Coast and up here through Michigan somewhere. But that's to be seen. So I'll leave you links to that map. Here's the damage from the December 16th, 1811 magnitude 7.2 in New Madrid. That was in 1811, 1812, the winter of. And you can see moderate to heavy damage in a large area, moderate damage in a larger area. There were no people here. And notice how they only have it here towards the East Coast because really there was very few people to the west of this area at that time. So I want to just run you through real quick. They did a simulation here, the tsunami forecast model animation of a 9.2 magnitude earthquake in Cascadia and what the tsunami and the effect would be. Catastrophic tsunamis are in red. Loss of all life within 50 feet of sea level. And this would be a ringer. And you can see how it's now a standing wave. And to the north here, it's even passing through island chains into the inner bays. This would be a major 9.0 Cascadia. And it would be submerging all of these islands. Probably total loss of life.
Now, luckily, there's not a lot of people up in this region, but Alaska is populated. And the West Coast all the way down to Central California. It's an interesting animation, folks. I'll leave you links to this. Something to consider moving forward where you might decide to live in the future. So it's a heads up on the seismicity in the U.S. in the Ring of Fire, especially on San Andreas. Look at that activity on the West Coast here. We had a major pop-off here uh, in the Indonesia area that I was thinking might be on Bali, and it was not. But there are ridiculous papers coming out. <laughs> I mean, I wish I had this up here. Right here, Bali volcano, Earth set to become cooler after Monk Ogung erupts. Total nonsense happening in the world, folks. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do so now. Share this with like-minded people. I hope you got something out of the video, guys, and be safe.